Hi everyone. I have a tag to do and I was tagged by Katie, my son runs, and she has a, a YouTube channel and um, she tagged me and she, um, I, I love to listen to her tag, um, her answers rather. Um, so she tagged me to do it and so it's called Nerimons, N-E-R-I-M-O-N-S and it's a tag that was started in England and um, I guess it's, you know, gone all around. So anyways, I got tagged. So it's five questions and um, I'm just going to start. Um, what was your, what is your biggest fear is number one. Um, I think my biggest fear is um, outliving my children um, and or, you know, losing a loved one before I die. I can't imagine my life without my my two daughters and my husband and I, th I think that's my biggest fear that you know being the one left behind to feel the heartache and 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 as far as my kids going before me I just pray that it never happens I just that's my biggest fear you know I just as a mother I think that you know every mother probably feels that way um, number two um, how did you know Santa wasn't real? Um, my brother, my older brother told me one Christmas Eve when my parents had the fireplace going and I was crying and saying, you know, Santa's not going to come to our house. He'll see the smoke coming out of the chimney and, and he's just going to, you know, go right over. He'll go to the next house and give them our toys. And looking back, I was a selfish little thing at the time. I wanted all the toys to myself. But um, anyways, my brother saw that I was crying and when we... My, our parents sent us up to bed. He came in my room and he says, I just want to let you know, Mar and Dad are the uh, Santa Claus. They've been buying all the presents every year. And, of course, that made me cry even more because, you know, no Santa? Um, God, back then I used to pray to him for gifts, you know, tell him what I wanted, you know. Um, let's see, number three, what is the best idea I ever had? Um... I think the best idea I ever had was to have children. Um, and I mean, it, it doesn't sound very original, but to me, it's the best thing that ever happened to me. Um, the kids are just a blessing, and they're, you know, your friends for life, and, you know, your family, and they give you grand grandkids, and they're just, they're the best idea I ever had. <laughs> um, number four is, what is the most embarrassing thing your parents ever did? Um, that has to be one time when I skipped school, and the school called my mom and said, you know, Colleen isn't in school today. Is she sick? And she said, oh, well, she left the house this morning, uh, and she's not here. I assumed she was going to school. Let me see if I can track her down. So it was senior skip day. I was a junior at the time, but my boyfriend at the time, who later became my husband, was a senior. And um, so we all skipped school over at his house because his parents both worked during the day. And a bunch of kids were over there. We were just kind of like listening to music and, you know, just hanging around. And, you know, we weren't doing anything wrong or anything, but... Uh, she called over there, and um, his aunt answered the phone who lived with them. And my mother says, uh, is Colleen there? And and his aunt says, yeah, just uh, just a minute. And so I got on the phone, and my mother says, you better get your butt home here right now. The school called, and, you know, if you don't come home here, if you don't have him drive you home, I'm going to send the truant officer over there and get you. And And I don't even know if they have truant offices anymore. Um, but um, nobody wanted to mess with the truant officer. Um, so, anyways, um, I remember going home, and I walked in the house, and she says, get your stuff, and you're going to school. And, oh, God, I just knew what was coming, that she was going to embarrass me in the office, which she did. So I tried to fake sick, like I was throwing up in the bathroom making all the noises and everything like I was sick. And so she says, 
don't think you're going to pull the wool over on my eyes again, she says. You're going to school even if you have to take a bag to throw up in. So, anyways, we got to the school, and she parked right in front of the office, right in front of the front door, took me in by the collar. Here I am, a junior in high school, and it was it happened to be lunch hour, and, you know, everybody was just, like, you know, going down to the lunchroom, and there were, like, tons of kids in the hallway and here I come in by my collar with my mother and so she marches me into the office and she turned in every single kid my friends that were with me and we all got office detention for like two weeks after school and I had to find my own ride home or walk home so that was, that was the most embarrassing thing that ever that my mother ever did to me I got another one, too. Uh, another embarrassing thing she did to me. Um, back in the 60s, when the Beatles came out, um, I don't even know how old I was then. Let's see, I was born in 54. So 64, I would have been 10. I think I was about 11 or 12. And I, I was 12. And um, everybody had the long bangs, you know, like the Beatles. And my mother used to always say, cut those bangs. You know, let me cut those bangs on you. I'm sick of looking at those bangs. So we used to have a hairdresser that lived up the street that she was friendly with. So she says, oh, why don't you go up her house and, you know, she'll trim them for you so you'll look pretty. So, and she says, um, you know, go on up and, you know, I'll just pay her later. So while I was on my way up the street, she called her friend and said, cut the bangs short. I'm sick of looking at them. So at the time I had like, you know, a little pixie haircut, you know, with the bangs and like little sideburns and, you know, short in the back and everything. And I come out of there, my bangs were, it looked like a crew cut. They were like this long. And the rest of my hair was that long too. I went to school the next I came home crying. My eyes were all red. I cried all night. And I begged her, please don't make me go to school. And I went to school the next day with a kerchief on, tied around my head, like tied in the back. And everybody's looking at me like, what's with the kerchief? But nobody said anything. And I remember being in the lunch line and this boy that had a crush on me, thought it would be funny if he pulled off my kerchief. He didn't know that I, you know, had such a short haircut on me. And I hated him after this because he turned mean. And um, anyways, he pulled it off right in front of the whole cafeteria. And of course, my hair's all sticking up, you know, in the air like a crew cut. And all of a sudden, all the, the boys and girls used to sit on different sections of the cafeteria, the, you know, in junior high. The boys would be on one side, the girls on another. And I was like in seventh grade at the time. And all of a sudden, this chant started in the cafeteria, and all the boys' side were like, Hakawi! 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 And like, you know, like the Hakawi Indians, like I got scalped or something, I don't know. But I was mortified. And I went home from school that day, and I told my mother, I'm not going to school. I'm not going back to that school again. And that was just so embarrassing. So that's, that's another thing my mother did to embarrass me. Um, number five, if you could have one career, what would it be? Oh, I got fruit flies in here. Um, one career, what would it be? I think it would have to be... I love cutting hair, so it would probably be a hairdresser or an interior decorator. Okay, so those are my five things, and I would like to tag um, let me see. I think I'll tag Christine and
pristine and this is a tough one Liz for kids wears wigs Liz I tag you too so Christine Lambshed and Liz. And um, I'll look forward to seeing what your answers are. Um, anyways, guys, I hope you're all having a great night. And um, I'll talk to you all soon. Bye-bye. Thanks for watching.